um, I, hello people, I'm here to do a video regarding the coronavirus outbreak. I'm going to be going through some different uh, people uh, that's discussing this and talking about it. Um, hoping you guys can understand how important it is because we need to be preparing. One lady had a dream, a vision, and I want to share it with you. I got it from another friend that watched my channel. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing her uh, message with you guys. I'm going to be talking to, uh, going over to Dave Hodges, uh, letting him talk about some things going on with the United Nations. And I'm going to be talking, uh, just sharing some other reports. Uh, and that's about it. I'm not going to get into any major news today on here. I will put some news in the description box. Uh, but I'm just going to get to these main things going on. Because it seemed like... Um, could it be really possible that we are going back to Egypt, like I've been shown on my channel many days? Uh, are we going back to Egypt? Uh, back in the time of um, Egypt, you know, we had uh, plagues breaking out in Egypt, uh, different things breaking out. Um, and I just thought it was interesting. I had these pictures here to show you. But are we really going back to this time? It seemed like we are. Uh, from what I'm seeing myself, when the uh, waters turn to blood, I know sometimes we, we've been listening to a lot of other videos in the past about the animals dying, uh, water turning to blood, uh, all kind of things, some other uh, YouTube uh, watchmen and things. Uh, but I really think we are at the point, I think somebody last night, Carrie Gettin, I think she was talking about it last night too, that we are back in Matthew 24, where we are beginning of the true plagues, uh, the true plagues and pestilences, uh, earthquakes and these mega quakes and the times of sorrows, if you want to put it that way, the times of sorrows. So um, let me go ahead and go over here and start this video out today uh, with what's going on here around us. Uh, I hope you guys will really be uh, keeping things prepared in your households. I'm going to, that's why I'm going to let Dave Hodges talk a little bit. And then I'm going to, um, wow, I don't know. I think I had some other things come on last night, but I can't get to them right now. I'll probably come back with another video and show some things I got from the Bible last night in the Word. Uh, but probably Sabbath tomorrow, maybe possibly. Uh, but let's go here now. And go over here to uh, this woman who had this vision dream. And then I'm going to show some other things too first. So I think I'm going to show some other things here first. So I'm going to mute it out. And then I will come to her video here at the end. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, get this muted out. And where you guys can hear some other things. Reports coming in. Okay. Um, let me do that now. <clears throat> okay, hello again. <clears throat> um, so, we're here today uh, to give you an update on novel coronavirus in Ontario uh, with a further update, and I'm joined uh, by colleagues today. Uh, the uh, middle there, you know Dr. Barbara Yaffe, this is Dr. Chris Mackey, who's the Medical Officer of Health for the Middlesex London Health Unit. And we have Dr. Vanessa Allen, who's the lead medical microbiologist at the Public Health Laboratory at Public Health Ontario. And so what we want to tell you mostly today is that we're going to confirm our third uh, case of novel coronavirus in Ontario. <clears throat> and just to say this is a little bit different than the other one, and that's why we're going to be talking to you today. Um, this newly confirmed case is a female in her 20s who arrived asymptomatic. Um, 
from uh, the area of concern, indirectly from uh, that, from Wuhan, and uh, came back into Canada on the 23rd of January, and then went to the uh, community of uh, London in Dr. Mackey's jurisdiction, and at that time, uh, she was asymptomatic. And during her time in her own uh, location, she noted some symptoms and did the correct thing, and Dr. Mackey's here to answer details about that, and I'll ask him to speak in a moment that throughout this process that she was seen, she was assessed and worked with the uh, local health department, uh, was admitted at the hospital under full protection of the staff and that, so no staff were put at risk throughout this process. And uh, throughout this time, as you're going to hear from Dr. Mackey, protocols and procedures were followed uh, excellently, excellently in such a way that there's been no risk at all to uh, Ontarians or to the health system in this process. During this time, um, samples were submitted to the uh, Public Health Laboratory at our one here in Ontario, and the testing had demonstrated it was negative, and she was part of our negative uh, list on that one there. And <clears throat> part of what we're going to be talking about today is that in these, this evolving situation, our laboratory systems are moving quickly to keep upping the quality and insurance of the testing, and they're cross-referencing all the time, and Dr. Allen's here can man answer some of those questions. So that during that time, with cross-referencing with even more specific and more different testing, a uh, different type and more specific one at the National Medical Microbiological La Laboratory, they contact contacted our lab and said one of their tests came back as positive, weekly positive, and they had discussion on that basis there, and as med microbiologists do, they'll say, well, I think in this case, on a precautionary basis, we should switch this one from a negative to a positive, even though the level is very low and the sense is that the viral load was very low as well. Nevertheless, to be thorough and precautionary, this one should be switched to a positive case. So that differs from some of our other ones we've had. So then Dr. Mackey was notified, as was the uh, uh, the person, and uh, they continue to monitor the situation, and Dr. Mackey is here to give a little update on that as well, and I'll hand over to him in a second here. So as a result, we're doing our testing, and what you're going to hear is that in this rapidly evolving, because remember, we only started this whole process two weeks ago, and shows you how fast the system's moving, how different it was from SARS in that time. Our labs are really moving at a quick pace to continually up the uh, aspects of their testing and comparing notes back and forth. And this shows you the value of a laboratory network in Canada, which is not only just ours and uh, Winnipeg, but also we have our counterparts in British Columbia, as well as that in, in Quebec. And they are working back and forth to continue to ensure a quality lab system in response to this emerging infectious disease issue in Canada. So um, the majority of the cases that were previously considered negative have been confirmed as negative by the National Medical Laboratory. Uh, only this one is the one so far that has, they had any question with, and I said it was just barely positive, but um, they agreed with our laboratory staff in Ontario that we should switch that from a negative to a positive case. What's going on? My name is Lewis. Today is January 30th, 2020, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. All right, guys, so we got two breaking news updates. One is uh, this one's going to be in my second channel. I'm thinking about doing a live stream in the next maybe 40 minutes. But so we got breaking news updates. The State Department, the U.S. State Department finally issued Do Not Travel to China Advisory. Let me see if I could uh, switch to this the other way around. Here we go, guys. This is a uh, big breaking news right here. 100,000 Chinese under observation as coronavirus death soar. Now, the U.S. State Department finally issues do not travel. This is level four. This is the highest to China advisory. This live stream is going to come up um, in the next maybe 40 minutes. I'm doing tons of research, guys. And uh, we are seeing a lot of events happening right now. So, uh, also, I want to show you this one right here. This is a uh, this is a big breaking news updates. So uh, I don't know if you guys be able to see that, but uh, let me just read it to you guys. It says here, at least thirty students and three teachers from a Florida school are confined to their homes, meaning that. Uh, they, they are no longer to step foot on a school property. 
Um, and, and the reason why is because they're being tested for coronavirus. Uh, this is happening in the state of Florida. 30 students... 30 students and three teachers from a Florida school are confined to their homes and being tested for coronavirus after possibly coming into contact with a sick student from China while attending a four-day conference at Yale University. We're going to get to this breaking news updates, guys. Um, this is not good, and the reason why is because... Uh, you know, number one, I do live in the state of Florida, and I don't live too far from this area. I don't. And um, number two, I got my kids that go to school. Now, it says here, Palm Beach Gardens. So this is in Palm Beach Gardens. Uh, here we go. So Palm Beach Garden, there is 30 students and three teachers from a Florida school are confined to their homes. That means that these uh, these students and teachers uh, are, are going to stay home until they get better. They are not allowed to step foot into the uh, into uh, the, the school. Um, now, they went for a test, and they're not going to get the result until the weekends. So there's a possibility that the students and three teachers, uh, we're talking about more than 20 students, might, be, uh, might have the coronavirus. And uh, what's so dangerous about it is the Super Bowl. Uh, the Super Bowl is this Sunday. So there's a possibility some of these students might go to the Super Bowl. And a lot of people are going to be there. So um, Florida schools are confined to their homes. So these people are going to stay home until they get better. As they await word on whether they were exposed to coronavirus while they attended a four-day conference at Yale University last weekend. The group from the Benjamin School and Palm Beach Gardens were at a Model United Nations event when a student fell ill with cough and fever. Testing indicated the flu, but because the student had come with small group from China, the Center for Disease Control, CDC, um, advised additional testing for coronavirus. Yale cut its conference short and students headed home. The Florida group expected test results by midweek, but were informed Wednesday that a backlog at the only U.S. lab testing for the virus means they possibly won't hear until the end of the week. The Palm Beach Post reported, citing a letter sent to parents from the school interim di uh, director Thomas J. Reed. The news comes as worldwide concern and growing over the viral disease. China has reported 213 deaths from the virus and at least close to 10,000 infections. More people have now been infected by this coronavirus in China than were sickened dur there during the 2002-2003 SARS outbreak. We told parents that the CDC suggested they could consider allowing the group back on campus. But the school doctors advised it would be best for them to remain at home until we have conclusive news. Health officials uh, across the world are trying to take uh, precautions without triggering mass panic. Well, you guys are doing a great job with that one because there's a lot of people uh, already waking up. Um, so for an illness that has been confirmed in only five people in the U.S., all of whom are believed to have contracted the virus when traveling abroad. So um, there you go, guys. More than 30 students and three teachers from a Florida school are confined to their homes. They need to stay home. You're not allowed to come to school. Don't dare come to the property because you guys could be infected with the coronavirus. Um, you know, I talked about this many times. Uh, the president should have declared a national emergency. He should have done it a long time ago. Now we have uh, Florida that is a huge, 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 huge news. And nobody knows about this. This is not even on the news media. Nobody's talking about this. I was on YouTube. I couldn't find a lot of, I mean, I couldn't find no information. And this one just popped up. This one here just came out. 
So it says here, State Department finally issued do not travel to China advisory. So um, this live stream is going to come up. It's not going to be a long live stream. Where One of the things that we really need to do as a citizenry is when we get Donald Trump elected for a second term, we need to get us the hell out of the United Nations. The United Nations is a corrupt, rogue organization made up of primarily tin-horned dictators who do not respect people's rights, do not re respect the sanctity of life, and only have one agenda, really what we might call their New World Order agenda. We're going to talk about this here on The Common Sense Show. My name is Dave Hodges. I'm the host, and we are the show that is freeing America one enslaved mind at a time. We are brought to you by preparewithdave.com. I just uh, had a conversation with someone from the mainland in China that got back to the United States, and they have family in China, or they'd be coming on the show, and they're afraid of reprisals. But they told me to say, that what we are hearing about in the United States, about what's happening in China with regard to the coronavirus, is 10,000 times worse. Okay, I'm going to cover that in a different podcast, but let me just say this. When martial law comes here, and it will come here, you will be confined to your home. We got a hold of those FEMA recommendations for President Trump to impose martial law. You won't be in and out of your home. What you got is what you got. Do you have the food, water, guns, gold, ammo, medicine, and tools? Primarily food and water. Do you have that? Yes or no? If you don't, you could really be sorry. So we have this two-week special designed to get people off the mark easily. 47% off. So it's almost nothing. Restaurant quality, 25-year shelf life. And people are saying, I'm going to buy lots of these, Dave, because I'm adding to my food supply. Good. You're planning. For the people who are still thinking about whether it's worth it to plan, you don't watch the news, you just kind of wandered in here today. You need to listen to what I'm telling you because you may not have long. Now, they do have a two-day turnaround on shipping. That's the good news. The bad news is I can't tell you how fast this is going to spread across the United States. Mike Adams is coming out with figures, and his website was down today because I'm sure he reported this, that those figures are much greater in America than what we're being told. Total underreporting of what's going on, typical mainstream media nonsense. So we have a real problem in this country, real problem. And what I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, is that um, what I'm telling you is you better get your food. You better get your food. You better get it now. Preparewithdave.com. And along those lines, you want to talk about people that don't care about you? And this it's, this is kind of like half commercial, half news story, but it's all news. Because, see, the United Nations pulling crap on us that is putting us at risk. Yeah, their World Health Organization, which is a flipping joke. They're saying, oh, yeah, we've declared a pandemic. But you can't stop mass migration. What? Wait a minute. The way that you stop a pandemic is quarantine. That's the standard practice since the dawn of time. And they're saying you can't do that. Their mass migration is more important to them than the spread of pandemic and the potential death of tens, if not hundreds of millions of people. See, again, people say, Dave, I don't think we should go to the UN. They're a peaceful organization. Do you still have that opinion now that you know this fact? This is unbelievable. The UN Migration Pact takes precedence over life. Are you as mad as I am about this? I'm absolutely livid about this. And our president needs to thumb his nose at the United Nations. He needs to kick them out. Get them the hell off the East River Let's get rid of that Rockefeller faux pas legacy once and for all and get them the hell out of our country. Leave. We do not want the blue helmets here. Wherever they go is death and destruction. Now, why do they want mass migration? Has anyone stopped to really even look at this? 
No one's even talking about this, but why do they want mass migration? Because they're destroying the culture of dominant nations. You see, you're not taking people from Australia or New Zealand and sending them to Sweden. Those are similar cultures. They're Western cultures. You're taking people from foreign, totally foreign cultures, radically different societies and cultures and religions, and trying to mix them like gasoline and oil. And it's ending up like gasoline and fire in places like France and Sweden and Germany. And Europe is basically saying, well, we don't want any part of this. At least some of the Europe. I'm talking about the Czechs and the uh, people from Hungary and the Poles. And they're saying, no, we don't want any of this because it's not good for our nation. Oh, we allow immigrants from everywhere. We just don't want to allow millions of immigrants to overwhelm our system. But see, the UN is about, they've declared by 2030, they will be the global authority. They don't want nations with traditions and cultures. This is what mass migration takes away. You say, Jay, that's a conspiracy theory. Okay, set aside the conspiracy. What happens with, if you have a country of 100 million people and you bring in, say, 20 million people from a totally foreign culture, totally different, 180 degree difference, do you think that's going to have effect on the majority culture? Is that going to change the national identity? That's the goal. Take away sovereignty. George Soros is committed a billion dollars to teaching online courses that are anti-nationalistic, anti-patriotic, pro-globalism. And now we see this reflected in healthcare policies governing the world. How the hell are we letting the UN say our migration policies are more important than your life? Because that's what they're saying here. If you're not pissed off, you're not paying attention. We need to really lobby to get the UN out of our country. God help us. Who's going to be our president in 2024? We need to be looking forward to that too. How about Trey Gowdy? Would you like him? Hmm? Wants, Mitt Romney wants the job. We need to make sure that Burisma takes him down. Because Mitt Romney is a classic globalist. The UN will dominate us if we don't have a strong president in the second term here with Trump. we got to make sure he's reelected. And also, too, in 2024. And that takes us up to 2028, doesn't it? And when did the UN say they're going to be the global authority? Overriding all nationalism, all sovereignty, all national laws. Well, that's two years after that. You see, people tell me, Dave, I don't like politics. Do you like enslavement? Hmm? Do you like living in chaos and poverty? Maybe you should learn to not embrace politics, but learn how to use politics for your own survival. It might be time for a paradigm shift. The UN is bad and it needs to be gone. And this needs to become our mantra. That's it for the Common Sense Show. Please share this far and wide. Give us a thumbs up on the way out. And also, too, we would ask that you would consider joining our Patreon movement. We're Literally shook me. I felt a shaking in my spirit. I felt alarm bells going off in my spirit. I literally felt a physical response to the information that was given to me. I've held on to this and then throughout the day today and for the last three hours, the alarm bells have continued to go off in my spirit and now I'm making this brief message to you. This virus, this disease, this plague that is in China, began in China, is very, very serious. This is not being reported correctly and accurately in the mainstream news. Understand that we know that the mainstream media has not been honest in several areas. So we have to expect and understand and respect that it's going to be the same in other situations.
I have a friend who is a missionary in China, and they have smuggled out some video and some photos. There's other uh, information that's being smuggled out of China, and the death toll is in the thousands. It's not nearly as low as they're trying to get everyone to believe that it is. And of course, it's now expanding into other countries. You must know that if people are dropping dead in the streets, people are dropping dead in the hospitals, they're running out of food, they're uh, showing photos of the groceries being emptied, that this is going to affect the world. This is going to affect commerce. This is going to affect trade. This is going to affect um, travel. This is going to affect the banks. This will spill over in many, many areas. And if we talk right now just in the health core of the issue, that this, this uh, particular virus, they're saying it's a five-day incubation, meaning people do not feel that they're sick. They're not acting sick. They're interacting as usual. They have traveled as usual. And then they get to that location, and then they become very ill very quickly and die. So I want you to imagine right now where you live, if your town was put on lockdown, quarantine, that means that there will be military tanks, piles of dirt and sand, and you're completely blocked. That would mean the interstates in and out are blocked. Your roads, the main roads and side roads, everything is blocked. What would happen to your town? your city? How long would it take to run out of food? How long would it run, ta take to run out of medical supplies or necessities? It won't take very long at all. In China, they are, have been given orders to shoot to kill anyone that tries to flee, and people are fleeing in effort to try to find food. So what I am doing right now, what has alarmed me, is the awareness of how serious this plague is shooting across the world. It shook me in my spirit, and I've sat on it because I wanted to be sure what I was feeling, what I was sensing, what I was hearing. And I want to give you some instructions that are vital to what you need to do, and you need to do it now. The holy people, you must consecrate yourselves. What that means is you must repent of your sin. Those of you that have been in open sin, you must renounce it. You must confess it. Those of you that are in relationships with fornication, those of you that are involved with deception, those of you that have been stealing, those of you that have been lying, those of you that have been involved in dishonest schemes, those of you that have pornography and fornication and perversion inside your home, those of you that have filth in movies, those of you that have trinkets and idols and things that don't belong in your home, you must now cleanse your home, cleanse your mind, cleanse your body, and you must get on your knees and repent to God. All of us should do this. All of us must do this. So that's number one. We must consecrate ourselves and we must confess and repent of our sins and any sins that we may not even be aware of to ask God to bring that to our attention. The second thing that you are to do is to anoint yourselves with oil. Anoint each other. Anoint each other's head, hands, feet. And I found it so ironic as I was doing it myself that to protect and anoint my hands, what I touch, what I come in contact with, and my feet, where I walk and where I go. Isn't it interesting that this is where Christ was pierced for us in his hands and feet? Our hands to be that of servants, our feet to be that of, of soldiers and those who are working for the gospel of peace. Anoint yourselves, anoint each other in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask for protection and anointing over your physical body, over your hands, what you touch, over your feet, where you go. Anoint your homes with oil. The next, but place the word of God over your door frames. Do not skip this instruction. 
If you don't have stencils or something fancy or a photo to put, then get a piece of paper and handwrite a scripture that you want over your door frames. And then you can go and purchase yourself something nice if you choose or just keep something handwritten. Understand the issue of what is coming out of China. You must know that food comes out of China. You under, have to understand that supplies and materials and many, 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 many things come out of China. How many times you turn something over and it says made in China? There's people right now that you've placed orders on Amazon or with FedEx or other situations and it's coming out of China. Use wisdom if you are even to open it and receive it. This is very, very serious. This is not a joke. This is not a game. You want to mock and laugh? I pray for you. If you knew these simple instructions would save you and your household, you would do it in a moment. Nothing we do in representation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and representing and identifying ourselves as a holy people is ever done in vain. Pray for the people in China. Pray for the holy people in China to be protected. Pray for the holy people that you know and you're connected with. Holy people, we must rise. We must be consecrated and holy. We can't just put the sticker on us and say we're holy and we live sinful lives. Persecution is coming. Hard times are coming. The weather and all of the things and all the things we're told in God's word have been coming. The fires, the earthquakes. Now we are at the plagues, the sickness, the disease. When I prayed just a few minutes ago, I thought, here I am in a modern world, placing oil on my head, my hands, my feet, behaving in the way that the holy people of the, the past did. They fasted. They prayed. They consecrated themselves. They hunkered down on their knees and prayed their hearts out for protection. Be obedient in this instruction. For those of you who are not sure what to pray, I'm going to lead a prayer that you can repeat. Please, I urge you. I have never in a long, long time felt the shaking in my spirit and in my soul and in my mind like I do about this. It is coming here. It is coming. It is coming. It is coming here. It's coming. Whether or not it's reported or not, we are not going to go by the words of the world. We're going by the messages of the Spirit. He will always communicate with his holy. He always gives his holy people the warning. He always gives the holy people opportunity for protection. But we must choose obedience to receive that protection. When he instructed them to place the blood of the lamb over their door frames, they could have disobeyed. They could have laughed and said, what a joke. Huh, they didn't. They did it quickly. And they were passed over. Please, holy people. Anoint your homes. Anoint your homes with the word of God over your door frames. Place the word of God in your purse and in your pockets. Don't underestimate God's word, which is the sword. I carry a mezuzah in my purse. Don't underestimate having God's word on your body in a pocket or a purse. Don't underestimate placing it over your door frames for protection. On your mailboxes, identify yourself as a holy family, as a holy person. Be aware what you're touching. Be aware who you're around. Wash your hands with soap when you're in different locations. And stand on the protection and the consecration that you have completed. Be obedient to these instructions. And I'll say this prayer so that you can repeat it if you feel you're not sure what to pray. Dear God, I come to you covered in your son's blood. In Jesus' name, I praise you and you are holy. God, I ask you that you forgive me of my sins. I ask you, God, 
to show me and reveal to me the sins that I'm not even aware of that have offended you and keep me away from you. Please, God, forgive me and show me and give me the strength to rise up and stand for you. Give me the strength to say no in situations that I know in my heart and you know are not right. Give me the strength to walk away from sin. Give me the strength to walk away from unholy relationships, unholy partnerships, dishonesty and perversions that I have been a part of. I ask that you forgive me. God, I want to be a holy person. I want you to know me as a holy person. I ask you, God, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, that you protect me against the sickness. I ask you, God, that you will please pass over me and this disease and plague will pass over me and go past my home and my family. I ask God in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, that I anoint myself and my forehead in the, na- in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ. I ask God that you anoint my hands with oil and hear my words that I give my hands of service to you and obedience to you. May you protect what my hands touch. I ask God that my feet be anointed. May I be a servant that walks for you. And Lord, I ask that you protect my feet where they go. Please, God, give me the courage and the wisdom to do what I need to do to remain holy Father, the only way that I can lose this is through disobedience. May I choose to obey you. May I be a follower of the way. Show me the way. Show me the way to behave as a holy person. Father, give me an ear that hears your whisper. Give me a heart that understands the heart of service. Give me feet that are willing to walk in difficult situations, but you give me the words to say. May my hands be the hands of a servant, and may they be hands of love. May my lips speak peace, but may I be fierce when I need to be bold, and may I be gentle and soft, and when I also need to be quiet. But God... I know your hand has lifted, your hand of protection lifted a year ago because man demanded that of you and you released it. And I am asking you as a holy person to please put it back over the holy people. Lord, we've asked you to leave our government. We've asked you to leave our schools. We've asked you to leave our libraries. We've asked you to leave the doctors. We've asked you to leave everywhere and we walk around mumbling and groaning, but very few of us have stood up and spoke against what's happening. Oh, we can have opinions, but how many of us have truly stood up and rose up and risen to the occasion to get in the battle? Forgive us for being lukewarm. Forgive us for being lazy. Forgive us for pretending we don't know about it. Forgive us for the people that needed our support and we pretended we didn't know anything. Forgive us when we were prompted to help someone and we didn't. Forgive us for not showing up when we needed to physically be in a situation that was going to stand up for you. Forgive us for choosing our jobs instead of serving you. Forgive us for feeding and serving ourselves sin instead of being pure and holy before you. I ask God on this day that as this each person hears this prayer and this urgent message, that they fall to their knees and understand the urgency and the seriousness of what is coming. It is not going to take people with opinions that are going to make it. It's not going to take whether or not you go to church every weekend. It's not going to take if you know scriptures or not. It's going to take, are we holy? Are we holy? 
the word and the warning you gave at the beginning of the year. Can the holy messenger even come and step over our threshold into our homes and know that we are a holy man and a holy woman? Forgive us for not being willing to pay the price to be set apart. Forgive us for being a part of what we think and the world thinks is funny and we laugh with them. Forgive us for watching filth and compromising because that's what the world tells us is entertaining. Forgive us for being lazy. Forgive us for sipping and drinking on milk when you've demanded us to be on the meat. Forgive us for expecting other people to do the hard work. Forgive us, God, for not having your our eyes in your word. You've told me repeatedly, God, that the dryness of your word is killing the families. Forgive us for using machines to help us get a little piece of your word. Father, I ask right now that the holy people will light a candle and kneel on their knees and be of a repentant heart, become consecrated and holy, anointed of their heads, hands, and feet, just as your son bled for us from there. His head bled for us with the thorns, his hands and his feet. And now we anoint ourselves. And Father, we took communion. I'm sorry, I forgot to say that. Take communion, a piece of bread, and juice or water, whatever you have. Just a few minutes ago, your body, you said, my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. My blood shed for you, do in remembrance of me. Oh, how lightly we have become over this simple memory and the act of communion. May we rise up consecrated. May our homes be cleansed. Your word is over our door frames. Your word is on our mailboxes and on our gates. We are set apart and marked. When the evil spirits come, they will flee. They will not cross over. Because we were obedient in this act. Those of you who are laughing and scoffing right now, I encourage you, even if you are a bit unsure, do it anyway. The time has come for the holy people to rise. We must rise, yes, but we must rise consecrated. You cannot say you're a part of the holy people, a part of the holy nation, the royal priesthood, unless you are consecrated this day. Holy people, holy nation, I am Esther. It is time to rise. July 26, the beginning of the end. Evil on evil, says the Lord the Eternal. It is coming. The hour has come. The hour is striking and striking at you. The hour and the end. Ezekiel 7, 5, and 6. Moffat. Fearful is the issue to which the world is to be brought. The powers of earth uniting to war against the commandments of God will decree that all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, shall conform to the customs of the church by observance of the false Sabbath. All who refuse compliance will be visited with civil penalties, and it will finally be declared that they are deserving of death. On the other hand, the law of God in joining the Creator's rest day demands obedience and threatens wrath against all who transgress its precepts. With the issue thus clearly brought before him, whosoever shall trample upon God's law to obey a human enactment receives the mark of the beast. He accepts the sign of allegiance to the power which he chooses to obey instead of God. The Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty, for it is the point of truth especially controverted. 
When the final test shall be brought to bear upon men, then the line of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve him not. While the observance of the false Sabbath in compliance with the law of the state, contrary to the fourth commandment, will be an avowal of an allegiance to a power that is in opposition to God, the keeping of the true Sabbath and obedience to God's law is an evidence of loyalty to the Creator. While one class, by accepting the sign of submission to earthly powers, receive the mark of the beast, the other, choosing the token of allegiance to divine authority, receive the seal of God. Heretofore, those who presented the truths of the third angel's message have been often regarded as mere alarmists, but as the question of enforcing Sunday observance is widely agitated, the event so long doubted and disbelieved is seen to be approaching, and the third message will produce an effect which it could not have had before. Okay, people, that's what I wanted you guys to hear for today. I'm just going to announce this here. I'm not going to play it, but... Um, Carrie Ann Gidding got a new video out. Maybe you would be interested in watching it. Uh, she's just talking about what she think about this uh, death of Kobe Bryant, whatever. You can go and listen to it. I will put it in the description box. But I'm going to go ahead and pray now and let you guys go. Um, I really thank you guys for all the offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, and those in need of mission fields. May Yeshua HaMashiach bless each and every one of you guys. Uh, send offerings to marner.campbell at gmail.com at paypal and also a lot of people mailed in donations uh, to fill my cup ministries post office box 414 canyon city colorado 81215 father be with all the people watching today we really need to go before you now in prayer and fasting and to give our lives to you totally as uh the lady just spoke about here uh kim codwell uh, we need to be really uh, seeking your face with all our heart, minds, and souls. So we ask that you be with all the people watching. We ask that you supply all the people needs according to your riches and glory, whether it's physical, mentally, spiritually. Uh, we ask that you would touch each and every one of our homes today, Father, with the blood covering of Yeshua HaMashiach. We ask that you would allow your people to really repent before you in, ser ser in sincereness, sincereness, Father. A lot of us, uh, we do things just by, um, you know, we do things just uh, not. Uh, you say we speak, we uh, we we speak of you, we talk of you, but our hearts are far from you. Uh, so we ask that we, you would help us to be serious, uh, living uh, believers today, uh, knowing that you, the only one, can save us. So we asking for your Holy Spirit to guide us right now, direct our paths. Uh, we do pray for China, we pray for Russia, we pray for Germany, we pray for Israel, we pray for all the nations, uh, Saudi Arabia, Iran, or Iraq, all these things that's going on around Israel, all the armies against Israel. Uh, we know that we need to be getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. So we thank you so much, Father, for your love for us, your care for us. We bind Satan, that evil, evil man who will be put to shame one day. You will take him down, completely down destroy him once and for all, and we bind Satan and all his evil angels, below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. We bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way. We ask for your Holy Spirit to fall on us. We wait for your latter rain. Father, prepare us for the latter rain. Prepare us for your soon coming, and we ask all these blessings. We thank you so much for your love, your care for us. As you say in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes if in him shall not perish but have everlasting life give us everlasting life today help us to choose life and not death hallelujah hallelujah so we thank you father and we ask that you come quickly come quickly hallelujah we wait for you father we ask that all the people out there struggling today will seek you and you say you'll burn to seek you because you uh, your burden is light. Your burden is light. And we would only seek you, Father. Hallelujah. So we ask that you would uh, be with all the people. Uh, prayer requests today. Uh, we ask that you be with every man, woman, boy, girl. We thank you so much, Father, for your love for us. And I'm going to just say shalom, shalom. Uh, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed uh, Shabbat tonight. 
uh, as the sun sets uh, be coming here in a few hours. Uh, so we ask that you have a blessed, blessed Shabbat. So I thank you guys for watching again. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Shalom, shalom. I love you guys so much. Bye-bye.